Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today I'm going to do something a little bit different with you. It has been from request and I think it's quite helpful for all of you guys. So I'm going to do a trigger point and foam rolling session. Um, so I'm just going to show you maybe where you'd use a trigger point ball and where you'd use the foam roller and how to use it. Uh, specifically the two products I'm using today is the brand that you guys have seen that I work with a lot. So it's Epitome Fitness. So it's the Muscle Max Ball and the Vibra Epitome Fitness Foam Vibrating <laughs> Foam Roller. Now that's not to say that you need a vibrating foam roller, but they're pretty amazing. So just before I continue, just a little bit about these products and you can find the link and the code down in my bio. So the Muscle Max Ball is extremely hard. So it's one of the hardest ones that you can get on the market. Um, super good for trigger pointing and specifically those areas that are quite hard to get with a foam roller and for climbers, these ones are pretty important. So infraspinatus, teres minor, pretty hard to get with a foam roller. So predominantly and pe I would say pec minor is a good one as well. So the muscle max ball can help you to get all those knots out just at home by yourself. It's just a really easy tool to just chuck in your car, in your bag, just have at home lying around, do a little bit of trigger pointing. For you that can't really afford to go get massages, that's actually a really good alternative to a myofascial release and it can help to improve the blood circulation in the muscle. Then comes the foam roller. The Vibra foam roller has one of the strongest engines on the market. It's got four speed setting and a pulsing mode. You can go 900, 1800, click it again, 2600, Woo! 3600, and then just a rhythm pulsing mode. So maybe when you found like a tight knot and you just want to go to that. So the honeycomb pattern grid on this is meant to mimic the feeling of a, a thumb essentially massaging you. Um, the, it comes with a rechargeable battery and that can last up to four hours if it was on fully. Obviously you're not going to be foam rolling for four hours straight. Um, so that's going to last you a fair while if you're just doing say 10 minutes a day. So foam rolling can definitely accelerate your healing. You can either do it, say if you would prefer training to just loosen up and get you know a little bit of blood to the muscle. That's often what I'll do, just loosen up, release some muscles. And you can also do it post session if you wanted to, just to accelerate your recovery process. Let's get going with like a little foam rolling session that I would typically do either before I climb or train or just on a separate day. Sometimes after, but generally not. I would say after, mostly I'm static stretching. And then before I train, I would do dynamic stretches and foam rolling. Uh, yeah, so let's go. All right, so you're gonna start with quads. So I'm gonna do a single quad at a time. I'm on a low setting, leaning into it with a bent leg here. And I'll just roll gently. If I find a particularly tight spot, I might stop there and just hold. It's important to understand that you don't need to be in pain. <laughs> so there should be a, maybe a little bit of discomfort if you're particularly tight, but there shouldn't, shouldn't be any sharp pain. If there is sharp pain, discontinue foam rolling. And you want to probably spend about a minute on an area. For the purposes of this video, I won't spend that whole time here. So just over that quad muscle. And you can come all the way up to the hip. Flex it here. And again, just holding if you find a particular tight area. And just small movements. And then as I get to the end, I kind of go larger movements. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Okay. So I just did a little bit of my hip flexor with the foam roller, but this is one of the things that I would probably use the trigger point ball 
four as well. So I'm gonna do that straight away before I turn over. So just getting that into the hip flexor. And this is one that's generally quite tight for a lot of people. So probably just find that tight spot and just hold. Making sure you're breathing is pretty important during any kind of release, whether that be stretching or trigger pointing or foam rolling, just to breathe, to just get that muscle to relax and let go. Into the other hip flexor. Like so. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna go to is going to stay the legs again to do the calf so i am going to definitely use vibration and the spikes you're gonna have to lift your body up a little bit to get some weight into this I'm going to start with like the left side of my calf and I'm going to move to the right. And just repeating that on the other side. Alright, and that is the calf done. We are moving up to hamstrings. So this one, I just deadlifted yesterday be quite tight <laughs> so again just gonna need to take your glutes off to put some pressure in here just one at a time vibrations on finding those tight spots stopping where you find a tight spot and continuing on so you can kind of go like one centimeter down at a time Move. Trying to recognize where those tight spots are. And then going with the long roll. Same on the other side. body you're gonna go straight up to the glutes so start with glute med here so I'm gonna have to get quite a bit of weight into here going single at a time For me, it's just that, hand, that insertion point, hamstring to glute, that's particularly tight. Kind of hold it there. And of course, I'm gonna go up to the TFL. And that is sensitive for me. <laughs> Find side to side for the TFL. Works quite well. Just gonna repeat that on the other side. I'm just going to grab the trigger point just further in that glute, just at the top, TFL. And this is one where I might just hold and breathe. Other side. Right, that is our lower body done. All right, so now I'm going to do upper body. You're going to start with the back. 
So mostly thoracic, so we're gonna get that under our shoulder blades, arms crossed, my back. Won't talk now because of this vibrations. <sighs> Pulling from bottom of our shoulder blades, kind of mid back to up, up towards the rhomboids and traps. Don't roll your lower back, that's completely not necessary. Once you've done that, we're gonna to go to the lap. So side on, arm out. You can kind of just manipulate your body position just to get all parts of that lat. Same on the other side. You can go arm behind your head as well. All right, so that's our upper back and our lats. All right, so now just to finish off the upper back and shoulder, we're just gonna go trigger point on the teres and infraspinatus. So you're just gonna get that under there. You'll probably have to find this. You'll, <laughs> you'll know the teres when you hit it. Just sitting under your lat there. And can find it by some external rotation. Find your infraspinatus a little bit higher up on the top of your shoulder blade. Again, being in the rotator cuff, muscles of the rotator cuff, you'll find ways in with external and internal rotation. So we'll repeat that on the other side. Getting in there. Let's see, go armpit. Just above. External rotation. Find that spot. And then moving along the shoulder blade. Just be gentle with this. I'm going to use this and go straight into pec and anterior deltoid. So face down, arm up. I like to do like kind of angels. And just rolling, transferring your weight into that pec. Holding if it's really tight and painful. Holding at the pec and then again I like to hold ooh, at the anterior deltoid. And we're going to repeat that on the other side. those muscles. All right so the last thing I'm going to do is forearms, extensive flexors and I'm going to do a little bit of trigger point on the wrist. So I'm going to start with my extensor and I'm going to turn this bad boy up and I'm going to go extensor down oh, it should come as no surprise if you're a climber that this area is going to be a little uncomfortable. Again, we don't want sharp pain, but holding where you feel a lot of discomfort, 
finish that off, I'm just going to slightly go into my wrist with the muscle max ball. And just going to do a little bit of hand flexion. And I'm just going to do that slightly on both sides. I think I've taken you through all the main areas that I would do in a foam rolling and trigger point session. I hope that is helpful for you. Um, in terms of frequency, in a perfect world, you do it every time before you train. Um, that's in a perfect world. A session like this, as extensive as this, is probably not going to happen that much. But say if you could do that three times a week, that would be a really good start. And then the other days might just be a faster foam rolling. If you do have the 15 minute spare, of course, your body is going to perform better if you do something like this every day. So again, that is the Muscle Max Ball and the Vibra Foam Roller from Epitome Fitness. Codes and link down in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Please do remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.